many ways is thank you to the Bridgeport Police Department and all those that assist the Bridgeport Police Department in continuing, um, which is not, this is not a, this is not a phase, this is not a fad for law enforcement in Bridgeport, but continuing the, the, um, the strong effort, the crackdown on what has been up until recently, despite our best efforts or the efforts of those before us, um, to a point where I would like to say at times things got out of control. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it was the proliferation of drugs um, and the, in the in the drug dealing business, but more more importantly, I think to us as a, as a city, um, as a community, what really rips at the fabric is the is the gun violence and the proliferation of, of, of uh, illegal weapons yeah. in the hands of individuals that have no lawful right to have them, right. and they're not using them for any lawful purpose. Um, uh, you can't, there's three, three more um, physical guns, and I don't know how much ammunition and how much drugs and money taken off the street again. Uh, Chief, I've had the pleasure, and it's not a pleasure to see people get arrested, certainly, but it's a pleasure to, to, to announce to the residents of the city of Bridgeport, because of your leadership, and the efforts of the Bridgeport Police Department, the neighborhood where this was, mm -hmm. and our city as a whole, mm -hmm. is safer today safer. than it was a couple days ago. Um, but it's, and, and we're going to continue to do this. Um, I don't want to go back. You know, I hate, to a certain extent, quoting crime statistics because they're just numbers. And if there's one person who's the victim of a shooting, uh, one person who's the victim of gunshot violence and, and, and uh, is killed. Uh, or, or a, rob a robbery victim is too many. Mm -hmm. But it's hard not to recognize the statistics that are for the first half of this year as compared to last year. I mean, you could compare them with any major city or, or, or any, any uh, community. Mm -hmm. um, they've dropped dramatically. And I always hesitate because you're only as good as, as, as yesterday mm -hmm. and, and as good as today. So we're going to be, this, this department, this administration is going to continue to put efforts in and be, and be vigilant and Absolutely. continue the effort. But when you take these guns off the street, coupled with the 13 you took off before mm -hmm. and the 10, mm -hmm. and you start adding up into 30, 40, 50 more weapons off the street. Absolutely. And not just the physical weapons and the individuals, but it's, it's clear to me, because of your efforts, that a message has gone out. And um, it's probably going to make your job harder to apprehend because they're probably going to be like ducking down. But the good news is they're not going to be out there shooting as much. They're not. Going to, they're not going to be taking. Uh, thinking this is the Wild West because uh, it's not. This is the city of Bridgeport. It's the home to. Uh, it's the largest community, largest mm -hmm. city in the state of Connecticut, and every citizen deserves safe, uh, a safe neighborhood, a place to raise their families, a place to work, and to raise their children. So I said it was just going to be an introduction, Chief. But let me no, come no, to you no, and let you let you go into some of the details of, of what this represents today. Sure, sure. And compliment if you could individually or collectively the department. Absolutely. First, I want to compliment you. This is part of what you initiated back in early in the year, back in January, with Folsom to the, uh, the task force. This, the task force works together. And we're able to do things all over Fairfield County. Not only is Bridgeport Police, we revamp, we revamp TNT. We have new officers here. We have new leadership here. Uh, we have we work well with the FBI, ATF, DEA. Um, Connecticut State Police, uh, Norwalk, Stanford, Darianne, who has come aboard. Uh, this individual <clears throat> in particular was uh, operating out of Black Rock, in the Black Rock area, and he was targeting Perfect County, the whole Perfect County area. So he would he would sell either marijuana or he would sell uh, you know, the dope, the, the, uh, the heroin. Um, is this heroin? Is this heroin? And so, a bundle of heroin, he would sell for any, anywhere $500, $600 to uh, someone from there again. And just, that's just one bundle, and he wouldn't sell no less than five bundles. So he's <coughs> making a lot of money. This was a mid-level dealer that, in, in, in especially uh, this day and age, where uh, the scourge of heroin uh, is killing our kids, it's a tremendous blow. Um, to the uh, to their organization. Not too long ago, we had um, a major hit by uh, the FBI task force officers, our guys, which we took a lot. We took major, major guys. These are the big guys. 
this guy, this guy's middle, these guys were up here. It just goes to show you how quickly they recover and they're back on the street. It is a credit and I commend my officers for their work, their dedication, and the key to this whole thing, we're working together. This is not a just Bridgeport Police Department, no. It is a collaboration between our federal partners, our state, uh, state partners, and, <clears throat> and, and locals. Thank you. So, Chief, could you give us just a brief chronology, like whatever, 8 o'clock last night, three people arrested, whatever you the want facts to are. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. This is an investigation that has um, been on the books now for, for, for a bit. Um, we set up a, um, we set up a, a deal, and um, in the course of the, uh, the deal, uh, it was deemed that we were going to rip the, uh, the drug dealer, the person that, uh, the main person that uh, was dealing the drugs. Um, officers from the, from the department, and I, like I said, other officers from the area uh, set up. They lured the individual to a particular spot. We got there, went to do the deal, and uh, we, uh, we, uh, we arrested him without incident. Um, we went back to the, uh, to the house, and, and uh, he was operating in Black Rock. I don't want to say the street, but went back to the house, and in the house, we found a pound of wheat and a safe. We found over a thousand uh, bags of dope, three thousand dollars in cash, shotgun, and two handguns. It's a forty-five, and I think it's a forty now. Around so, what time was this last night? Uh, I think it's around when did I, six o'clock. Six, six p.m. Yeah, six p.m. And it was the what was the name of the individual? Um, I don't want to put that out there. Now. Oh, sure. Okay. Okay. Was it? But it was, there were three individuals. Three. We made three arrests. Three arrests. Three okay. Arrests. Later on, we'll put it out. But I, sure. You know, I need to talk to them before. I yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Is this an ongoing thing? Are there more people who might be arrested? Oh yes. Yeah. Oh yes. Oh, yes. But like I said, this is, you know, it, this is ongoing and, and it's working because we're all working together. It was a brilliant, brilliant idea by the mayor to put this task force together, and it's made tremendous difference. You got everybody talking to each other. This. Narcotics and Vice Division, this building, you know, we all, they meet, my officers and, and task officers and uh, local officers, they meet here, they talk to each other, so everybody's on the same page. Every day, they go out, they have a target, okay? So every day, we don't have this, but every day, something is happening in the city of Richmond. Chief, you were giving me a brief tour, so has this facility been renovated recently since you came into office? Yes, yes. Uh, we, we took the building. The building was uh, in very poor conditions, and uh, we renovated it. Uh, thanks to the mayor's office, uh, we were able to uh, to clean it up, and uh, we have we have updated. We have computers. Our evidence rooms has a <laughs> a real door now. You know, it, it's it's quite a. I'll when, give you I'll give you a, tr uh, a little tour. <coughs> when was the renovation complete? It was completed about three weeks ago. Three weeks. Was this the first major drug operation? Since the completion of the facilities, no, no, we had others, we had others, you know. But you know what happens, Frank? It's, uh, you know, these things, these things, these things come, and, and after a while, it, we become not accustomed, but we come to it. And everything, everything has to be back. It's got to be placed, and there's a system in place. So not every day we can do that. We can do this. And what's the name of the task force? Sorry. Uh, uh, it was the. Um, it's okay, we can get it. Yeah, we we'll can get, get it from Bob. Uh, how many gauge? Hmm? How many gauge? How many gauge? Shotgun, please. 12, 12 gauge. Can you describe the, the home? Was it a single family home? Was, the, was it a know? single family? Or? It was a multi family dwelling. Multi family dwelling. Any other people in the home? There were, there were other there were other individuals, and this is why I can't put the name out there. Just for other reasons. I'm sorry. Oh yes, I'm sorry. We the car as well as part of the uh, interim. Yeah. So we we also have a car. Oh wait, the vehicle, there's a vehicle part. Yeah. Of he would make deals in the vehicle. He would show up and meet with uh, people from Darien and mm -hmm. other suburban communities in the vehicle. Which vehicle is it? Is it right? The Black Honda. Honda. The Black Honda. Yeah. yeah. Were all the deals made in Black Rock, or was he traveling around? No, he was traveling around. Yeah. Fairfield County, at, at Darien, um, all over the place. Properly registered to him, or? Was it registered to him? I don't know. Yes. Yes. Okay. Was this guy from Bridgeport? Yes. He lived in Black Rock? Yeah, he lived in Black Rock. He lived in Black Rock. 
excuse my ignorance on this because I no, no. gloss over a lot of stuff, but okay. there's a heroin issue going around. I think it's like poisoned or something, or right. it's I don't I don't know the details. Mm -hmm. Was this part of that? And what is Bridgeport doing about anything of this on the heroin? That's a whole that's a whole deal. We we're trying to eradicate that this problem. Um, people who are hooked on, on, on dope, they don't know that the dope is uh, laced with fentanyl or you know, uh, elephant tranquil, tranquilizer is, is, the, is the newest thing. And they inject themselves and don't wake up. they don't wake up. You know? Thank God, thank God we have this Narcan. Uh, I, had, I had a kid die in my arm not too long ago up in uh, from, you know, it's, it's sad. Were you able to test this heroin to see if it was that? Lace or anything like that? Well, no. the testing results occur at the Connecticut State Laboratory. Okay. It's just a presumptive test at this point. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and were the Darien police involved? Were they the only other police involved? Yes, no, Darien was involved. Mm -hmm. Were there any other uh, towns? Uh, in, in this particular one? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, so just Darien. No, just because he was not yet of Darien? Well, he's doing Darien, Fairfield. Mm -hmm. You know, no law, yeah. stand for. Was there any particular reason that Darien was involved over other towns? We had individuals from uh, Darien that were coming down here. We were contacted by Darien Police Department. Oh, okay. That's when we started working with them. How, How long, long ago? It was quite some time ago. We were watching this individual a couple months ago. He was making deals in the Upper North End in the Fairfield Town Line. Mm -hmm. Good. Everybody's good. Okay.